In this video, I'm going to review how to navigate through the settings panel on the Hilti PLC 400 tablet. When I click on settings, I'm brought to this screen where you have several different categories of settings. I'll go through them one by one, but essentially what you're doing is you're setting up the preferences that you have and how you view your information, and also you're setting up the tool to make sure that it's measuring accurately. So you'll see what I mean. Let's go through it one by one. Let's start with general settings. When you click on general settings, you can either choose first to have heights turned on or turned off. I recommend that if you are working with elevations where you need to measure benchmark heights and you need to measure the height locations of certain points or objects, obviously keep heights turned on. But if you were only doing horizontal layout and you don't really care about the height specifically, you can actually keep it off. Just remember that if you do have this on, when you station, it's going to invite you to measure your benchmark height so the station knows how high it is based off your benchmark. This next section over here is simply distance units. And simply put, all this means is when you are looking through your objects in your drawing, how do you want to see the distance units of everything? So right now I have it set to feet to an inch to a sixteenth. And let me take a distance measurement and I'll show you what it looks like. I'll come into my drawing and I'll go to my Kogo function to do a distance check. I went ahead and clicked a line and five foot three and one sixteenth. So it's just showing you, yes, it, it does round if it's able to be rounded. If it's not able to be rounded, it's going to go as deep to a sixteenth of an inch for you. That's how I usually like it because I'm in the United States. You can choose that to be anything you want. So I'll just quickly change this to, let's say, I want to see things in metric in the metric system, so decimal meters. I'll say check. I'll go back to that same line, and it's coming up as 1.601 meters. So that's just a preference. That only has to deal with how you like to see your units on the tablet. This next section, coordinate display input, is only important if you are importing CSV point files. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. All this means is when you are bringing in a CSV point file from either AutoCAD or some sort of point creation software, it's inviting you to type in your normal coordinate order so that it's already there waiting for you in that order so that when you import your points, it's already ready for you to import them in this order. So I usually have my or coordinate display input as NEH, Northern Eastern Height, so I can import my points. But if you don't work with CSV points, don't worry about this. If you do import CSV points, this is where you can set your default. But of course, when you go to import them, it's going to invite you to change it if you need to. So this isn't super important. This is just for convenience. If you need to learn more about what a CSV is, look in the description. I'll put a video there. Decimal format simply has to say if you want to have your decimals as periods or commas. Angle resolution is inviting you to change how deep of a description you want your angles to go. It has nothing to do with the accuracy of the tool. I usually keep this at one second of an angle. And to show you what that looks like, I will go ahead and make an angle measurement. So you can see it goes all the way down to 28 seconds of an angle, 31 seconds of an angle. It doesn't add memory or take away more battery to have this. So I always keep it at one second of an angle. There's no reason not to, in my opinion. This is asking you to choose your angular units, and I almost always use degrees, minutes, seconds. And if you didn't know this, angles are, yes, units of degrees, but each degree has minute angular deviations with it, within it, and that's measured with minutes and seconds. This does not stand for feet and inches. That stands for minutes and seconds when you're talking about angles. You have your language of your tablet if you want to change it, and over here you have your VA0 location. And I usually keep mine at um, zenith. And to explain what that means is basically when you are making angular measurements, do you want your zero, your vertical angle of zero, to be when the tool is looking directly up? Or do you want your vertical angle of zero to be when the tool is looking forward? It's just preference. And so if I show you this again, zenith would be, let me take another angular measurement. So I just move my unit to face directly up towards the ceiling. And you're going to notice that the angle reading should come in close to zero because it's going directly up. So my VA zero was set to zenith. But now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and change this to say horizontal or what I say horizon to remind me that I need to look towards the horizon to see my vertical angle of zero. I'll go ahead and turn my tool directly forward and I'll make that angular measurement and I should see zero as well. And you can see here it's coming up very, very close to zero and I'm looking forward. Now one word of caution, in order for this to work, you do need to exit out of the software and reopen it, I've noticed. It doesn't work if you simply switch it and then try to use it. If you do choose to, to change your vertical angle of zero location, 
exit out of the software and reopen it, and then it should work just fine. This next section is about GPS, and I actually used to keep this turned off, uh, mainly because I really don't work on massive job sites where I think I would ever use this. There's a lot of ways you can turn the tool to find you, and GPS, yes, it is one of them, but I've never really found a need to use it. However, I do know others that have. So if this is turned on, just remember that in order to make this even work in the first place, you have to make sure you go to your settings of your tablet and turn the location services on. You're going to want to make sure your airplane mode is turned off um, so that it can actually work. But yeah, location mode turned off, turned on. And when you go into the software, uh, you also can set how much you want it to spin uh, once it turns to where it thinks you are. So like, let's say I have my GPS turned on. I tell the tool to look to my location. It's going to look at my location, and then it's going to start to search for my prism um, at this range. So it's going to turn left and right horizontally by 40 degrees and turn up and down vertically 10 degrees once it thinks it knows where I am. If it doesn't find me, then it'll just stop, and I'll have to do another method to have it log on to me. But let me show you where to actually find GPS in here so you can actually use it if you ever want to use it. It's in this arrow button here. So if I press this arrow button, I will go to the map button. And then this icon here is what you'd press to have it find you via GPS. But let me show you why I don't always use it is because if this is my plan, and let's say I know I'm standing over here on my plan, I can actually just tap that corner of the plan. I just tapped it and the tool, I know you can't see this, but the tool obviously disconnected from where it was and it automatically spun to that location. I find that to be faster but I do know there's people that would argue the other way around. So just choose whatever preference you are. Um, but again, it's accessible from this map option. And so see if that's something you might like to do. I would say though, just be aware when your location is turned on, it does use a little bit more battery. I wouldn't say it's significant, but if you're trying to save battery, again, that's another reason why maybe you want to have it off. The next section is something called point creation. And I usually keep this set to multiple. And just to quickly describe what this means, if I go to point creation on my tablet and I'm creating endpoints, so I have a layout point selected here and I'm going to create an endpoint. When you tap on a line, do you want it to put points at both ends of the line or do you want it to just put points at one end of the line? So let me switch this to instead of multiple, I'll go to singular. I'll just click that line again and it's going to put a point at the end that I clicked closest to. So that's just preference. Do you want to see two points or just one? So for me, I'll put that back to multiple. The next section is prism target, and this is simply saying that when you are, for these angular sectors horizontally and vertically, when you have it spun towards you and you want it to try to find the prism, the range that it looks for is within 25 degrees of an angle. So it's going to spin left and right 25 degrees, up and down 25 degrees before it gives up if it doesn't find you. And that's actually found right here. If you go to this little arrow and you have it under your prism settings, and you have it looking towards you and you press this little search button here, it's gonna spin in that 25 degree left and right up and down circle before it gives up and says, hey, I can't find you. So that's all that means. When you press this button, how much do you want it to spin to look for you before it gives up? Now, predictive search is important. You definitely wanna have something here. I usually keep mine at three seconds. I've seen people that prefer five seconds, but you could go up to 10, but I've never really seen people go to 10 seconds. All this means is that if you were to walk with the tool and it's following you with the prism and you walk behind a column, do you want the tool to continue to follow you as if it was connected to you before it gives up and says it lost you? It's good for, especially if you're on job sites where you're walking around and there's barriers or there's people or there's something that might get in your way, you lose connection less often because the tool still tries to follow your range of motion before it gives up and says it can't find you. So definitely have a predictive search on here so it's predicting where you're at for a few seconds before it gives up. This next section is your keyboard. Um, what language of your keyboard for the tablet do you want? Do you want it to be dark up here, night, or light up here, day? That's preference. And description, this is simply asking you, do you want to add descriptions to your projects when you make them. So right now mine's set to off and you can tell it's off because if I go to project and I add a project, I'll go ahead and type a name, project 3333, and then there's no invitation to type in a description. If I change that to have description turned on, I can go back and if I add a project, you can see I'll add a project, 4444, enter, and now I can type in description, Y-O-U, and now you see that description shows up right there. 
In this next section, it's about layout, and let's go through one of these, each of these one by one. The first one's called auto zoom. I usually keep this turned off. I actually do not like it when it's turned on. Let me show you what it looks like when you're turned off when you're doing layout. So I'll say check. I'll go ahead and go into my layout. And if I'm ready to lay out a point, let's say I want to lay out point number six, which is selected right now. And you can see I'm on my prism. So as I go towards that point, you'll notice that it's not zooming in crazy for me. I have complete control over how much I zoom. So like right now I can manually zoom in, manually zoom out. So I'll zoom out that far. If I had auto zoom turned on, it's gonna auto zoom for me. So let me show you what that looks like. Turning it on. And now as I lay out and get closer to that point, it's doing the zoom for me. So if I zoom out, it eventually is going to zoom right back in for me like it just did. Okay, so that's complete preference to you. Do you prefer it to zoom in on, on its own or do you wanna have more control over that yourself? I like having control, but if you're okay with it zooming in like that, go ahead and change it. Map orientation north or free. I prefer to keep this on north most of the time and you actually just saw me laying out with it on map orientation north, but let me switch to free and then I'll switch back to north to show you the difference. I'm gonna switch map orientation to free. I'm gonna press check and let me go back into layout. What you notice is it's now switched for me. Now the tool is, the, the drawing I should say, is spun. Because what the tool does when you're on a free orientation is the tool assumes that I am looking directly at the machine. If you remember, I stationed right here on point station three. And so the tool is assuming that I'm standing here. And I'm sorry, it's blinking. It's just when I move the drawing, it does this. But when it's stationed here, the tool's assuming I'm standing here looking directly at the machine. And so these arrows that you see here are inviting me to walk directly towards the machine or to the left of the machine as I move towards that point. That's what it's guiding me to do. And it's, and it's orienting itself as if I'm looking directly at the unit. Because that's how these arrows here, these black arrows you see, are, are oriented as well. However, if you go to your settings and switch that to north... I'll go ahead and go into layout and you'll see that even though I'm in layout, the tool's telling me to move towards that point, but it's keeping my plan locked on plan north view. Plan north view simply means that the tool's not turning on me as I'm laying out. So those arrows you see still mean I need to move towards the tool or to the left of the tool. You know, it's still orienting me towards how I need to move towards the tool to lay out my point. So please remember that. But the plan is not gonna turn left or right however it needs to turn to orient as if I'm moving towards the tool. It'll stay plan north view, which I prefer because it helps me remember where I am on the job site as I move point to point. It's just preference. I invite you to play with both of them and see how it works for you. Whatever you choose, I'm sure you'll get used to it after a little bit of layout. This next section is to have your project information turned on while you're laying out. It's also asking you while you're laying out, do you wanna see the attributes of your points while you're laying out? So I'll go ahead and turn all of these on so you can see what they look like. And you can see when I, when I open the job up, you see the demo mat information right here. And as I'm laying out, it's inviting me to lay out this point, but it's showing me the attributes of that point that I have in there. If I open up my point list, you can see that these points have attributes on them. Okay, they have attributes on them, and as I'm laying them out, I can see those attributes if I so prefer. So as I click these points to lay out, those attributes pop up right over here. That's it. So if you prefer to see this information as you lay out or as you're working, you can. This little arrow here invites you to minimize that window while you're working or to expand it. So if you want to keep that information as available to you by your fingertip, you can by just minimizing the window, or you can have it off altogether. Again, that's just preference. The next section is tolerance, and this section is actually very simple. Please know that this has nothing to do with how accurate the tool is going to measure. It only has everything to do with the tool and how it adjusts its colors, red or green, as you're laying out or as you're stationing to warn you when you are outside of whatever tolerance you have set here. The deviations and the numbers that it's giving you as far as telling you distances are all gonna be the same no matter what tolerance you have. So you'll see that when I show you an example, but just keep that in mind. So right now I have my tolerance set to better and it's just one of the preset settings in here. You can change it to others if you need to, but let me keep it at better for now and let's show you some things on how this might work. I'll start with layout. And right now I'm laying out a point and you can see these numbers are flashing red at me. But as I get closer to that point, they eventually are gonna turn green. So you can see there they're turning green and they only turn green when I got within a certain 
distance towards it. So once I go beyond about an inch away from that, it goes red on one arrow. And as I get within an inch, it goes green. So you can see the numbers aren't changing, but the colors are. And that's all it is. So my layout tolerance was an inch. My height tolerance was, was one inch and a quarter. And my height was way off. But that's all that means. Do you like to see green faster or green later? That's just a visual preference. And stationing essentially looks the same. I'll go ahead and station my unit really quick and I'll make sure that it's slightly out of tolerance so you can see red versus green. Okay, so here you can see I've measured three control points on my job site. Two are coming in green, one is coming in red. And that just simply means that one is outside of that tolerance that I had set in my settings. If I press my green check mark down here at the bottom, we can see some more information. And I'm gonna put a link in the description to a stationing descriptive video on what everything means in here. I just wanna make sure you can see that green objects are showing up when it's within the tolerance that I set in settings and red is when it's obviously outside of that tolerance. So just keep that in mind. Uh, red is a visual piece of information telling you when it's outside of your set tolerance. Green, you're within it even when you're in stationing. But one last note I wanna make about the stationing tolerance is when you go into your layout and you want to check to make sure your stationing is still accurate what you can do is you can click this backside check right here and what you can do is measure remeasure one of your control points the exact same way that you did when you stationed and all it's going to do is the tool is going to tell you whether or not you are in or out of tolerance and whether or not you are in or out of tolerance just depends on whatever tolerance settings you have in here so it's a visual thing and also a backside check thing if you ever use that icon that I just showed you. So this next section is tool and connection. I'm not going to go into this very much here other than to show you where it is. Um, I'm going to link two videos in the description that go over how to connect your POS 150 or 180 and also goes over how to connect your PLT 300. If you need more information on that, just look at those descriptions. But this is what this section is all about is to get your tool connected. So go to those videos. Hopefully they'll help you. And of course, always leave questions in the comments if there's further questions. This next section is your PPM or your parts per million. And I'm gonna link in the description of this video more information on this, but essentially you wanna make sure before you station your tool or you measure with your tool that the tool knows what the weather is, what the air pressure is, what the temperature is, because long story short, the tool needs to know that to compensate for any errors that might come come within that because when the tool makes measurements with its electronic distance measurement unit within it the air pressure as well as the temperature could influence how those measurements are read but if it knows what the pressure is and what the temperature is it will adjust for that and this is indicated by this parts per million difference differential down here but just make sure that you do this and you will know that your total station is able to me measure and input that me your measurements accurately the next section are these three, and these are pretty straightforward. You have your system info that you can see your current software version that you're running. And it's if you are ever wondering how to update that software to make sure you're running the latest, I'll link down at the bottom of the description how to update your software. Uh, there's a video on that. It's pretty self-explanatory. It shows a serial number of your tool as well as your operating system. And when you're connected to a total station, it will tell you the firmware of your total station. So right now my firmware is 1.7.3 for the 180. It's obviously going to be different if you're connected to the PLT300. It shows you the serial number of your tool as well. And then below this, you have your privacy notice, which I won't go into. You can read that if you want. And then your support information. I have a little bit of a goofy numbers down here just for fun, but you can contact, uh, you can add or have a measuring specialist from Hilti add information for you that you can add in here so you can have quick contact numbers. Uh, you also have your remote support button here that you can click if you ever want to uh, get in touch with an agent at Hilti. They will use this link to help you screen share with them to see what problems you're dealing with if you have any on your tablet. And this option here is going to take you to uh, what log, basically log files on your tablet if you click it. It'll bring this screen up here that says, please see the HCL support zip file that you can spend send to the support team. Um, it's essentially here. I'll click on it. If you ever have any trouble uh, where you need to send log or error files, if, if there's any problems, that's what the, that's all this is. So I might as well show it to you, but I highly doubt you'll ever need this. I've never had to send it in myself. So that's all it is, but that's a nice explanation of everything that's on here. 
And if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments. Happy to help.